Hi, my name's Katie. This is Knowledge Hub from Universal Skills. Today's session is going to be about compartment ventilation. So today we're going to talk about compartment ventilation. So we've got our fake compartment here. So usually in the case that you've got an appliance within it, like this one, we're going to talk off to start with with open fluid appliances. So as you can see, we've got an ideal Mexico in here. There's some vents at the top and at the bottom. So whenever you're in compartment, you need to have high level and low level ventilation. Now, usually for open fluid, your bottom one is going to be bigger because it's got to do it for combustion and cooling, whereas your top one will just be for cooling. So if we have a look at this, in this scenario, we can see it's open fluid. Obviously this is set up with faults on it, so if you did see something like this, typically on someone's installation, it would be incorrect, so you would have to issue warning notices. But for now, we're just gonna focus directly on the ventilation. So, we can see that we've got open fluid within a compartment. If we follow us round to our simulation, so in this scenario, the vents are directly to outside. So as I mentioned before, the bottom vent is always going to be bigger because it's also used for combustion air. So if we take the 25 kilowatt boiler that we've said, the bottom one you're going to times by 10. So that would give us 250 centimetres squared. So whenever you're working out ventilation, it's always in centimetres squared. If you take the top one, it's going to be half of that size. So we're going to times that one by 5. So 25 times 5, 125 centimetres squared. Because it's direct to outside, that's all we need. Now, if we take the other scenario where it's direct, directly vented into a room, then we're gonna to have to work it out a bit differently. We're gonna still have the big vent at the bottom, but we're gonna to have to think about how much bigger it needs to be than if it was directly to outside. Now, what we're gonna do is work it out if it was vented directly into a room. So we worked out before for outside, it was gonna be 10 and five. Now all we need to do is double that again. So if you've got an open fluid in a compartment like we have in this scenario and it's vented directly to inside, your bottom one now needs to times by 20. So if you take the same scenario we had before, 25 kilowatts times it by 20, that's going to give us 500 centimetres squared. Now the top one, we're going to times it by 10 and that'll give us 250 centimetres squared. Now because we're going to vent it via a room, what we also need to make sure is that there's a fresh supply of clean air coming into that room as well. So the way you work that out is you take your boiler kilowatt again, so in this scenario we had 25, you manage your 7 for adventitious ventilation to give us 18, and then you times that by 5, so it will end up with 90 centimetres squared. Reason for that being is we need to make sure that that compartment can get a fresh supply of clean air so that the combustion is correct and it burns correctly. So that's covered open fluid within a compartment. Now if we touch briefly on room sealed within a compartment, because you're going to need the vents for cooling purposes only, in this case both vents are going to be the same size. So if you vented directly to outside, it, you times it by 5 and 5. And if you vented via room, you're going to times it by 10 and 10. Now, when we're looking at what the vents look like, what we need to make sure is number one, there's no fly screen on it. So you can see on this one, you've got some mesh and fly screen. What that does is it minimises the amount of free area the vent has. So you need to make sure that it's just all clear and unobstructed. Number two, it can't be closable. So again, what this could lead to is the customer might put the fire on or the appliance on and this might be shut because it was causing a draft. So what that can do is it can also hinder the flu pull and the flu operation. So we need to make sure that it can't be closable. Any holes that are within the vent need to be sized between five and 10 mil. And that is exactly what you need to look for when you're doing this. Most faults on ventilation tend to be at risk. So in that case, if there was a fly screen, if there wasn't enough ventilation or whether it wasn't there at all, you would be at risk in it unless there were signs of distress on the appliance, such as spillage, in which case it'd be an immediately dangerous situation. So that was a brief overview on compartment ventilation for both room sealed and open fluid appliances. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments box and we'll get back to you. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. I've been Katie, this has been Knowledge Hub for Universal Skills.